Chapter 3 Time for Tea As Alice lay in her bed, silently dreaming, a scream pierced its way through the Liddell residence, waking even the insects from their slumbers. David, being the first to awaken, nearly fell off of the large king bed in his hurry to get to his daughter's room. When he opened the door, he scanned the small pink room for not his daughter, but the source of his daughter's terror. He looked to his daughter, who only pointed a single, trembling finger toward her closet door. David followed his daughter's frozen stare to his daughter's open closet door, only to stop dead in his tracks. There, in the dark shadows that encased the room, stood a figure with glowing eyes and a large top hat. The figure held a solitary finger to his lips, as if to shush them both, and said, Trickery duck and trickery dee, you cannot get away from me. I'm in your head, in your heart, and your mind I will slowly tear apart. The girl knows true what I can do, and so But for now, sweet Alice, sleep so tight, for shadow stands throughout the night. Be not scared, though I give you quite a fright. There be not a worry for you tonight. And you, dear David, with the eyes so wide. <laughs> Not a word, and in you I'll confide that all is well, so, so well. So to you, dear David, I will tell. Tell of things you cannot imagine, things no man day cannot reach. But for now, I'm afraid, all I've done is pray. You too one day will understand that which is not explained. For in explanation, madness is at hand. <laughs> sweet, sweet, delicious madness. A treat so right, right for you to taste this night. Try as you may. Try all with your might, but it is futile, futile to try and fight. That, my dear David, is why we exist out of normality, out of ordinary, and out of humanity. <laughs> Face your fears. Fears abound in six years. Time goes fast, so do take haste. Don't let your precious time go to waste. Farewell, dear David, and Alice so sweet. I will be back. It will be a treat. But that you already know. <laughs> <laughs>
screamed David's wife. How long had she been there? Did you see him? replied the startled father. What? No! What happened? Why did Alice scream? It was the Hatter, Mum! The Hatter was here and, and he was going to hurt me! Father, you... You saw him, didn't you? Alice, there's nobody here. Go back to bed. And with that, he began to leave the room, his wife following shortly after. As he reached the door, his daughter called him from her bed. Father, you saw him! You saw him too! Didn't you? Pleaded his daughter. David was silent for a moment before he spoke. Your mother was right. There is nobody here. Go back to sleep. But father! No buts, Alice! Uh, I'm going to call a doctor in the morning. A friend of mine, me. We're going to see if we can help you. Back to bed now. David walked back to his room feeling an avalanche of emotions pour over him. Guilt for lying to his wife and daughter, confusion over what had just occurred, and most of all, fear. Fear for his daughter, for himself, and for his wife. Fear of the Hatter. Whatever he was, David felt an unyielding knot in his stomach. Whenever he even thought about the strange man. At least, he thought he was a man. After everything that had transpired that day, however, there were many things David was left unsure of. I am not crazy, he thought. Alice saw them too. David kept replaying the confrontation over and over in his head, contemplating whether or not the whole ordeal had happened, or if it was all some weird hallucination of his sleep-deprived mind. David went through everything that he could think of to explain away what he had seen, but much to his growing disappointment and discomfort, his mind could do little of anything to pacify his wandering concern. At that particular moment, it seemed as if the world had been tipped upside down and spun into a whirlwind, around and around and around and around and around and around and around these thoughts would go. <sighs> And where they stopped, well, <laughs> no one could know. Though even if David could know, he would still not know where to go when he knew. <sighs> poor, poor David. Back to Alice. She did not fall back into dreamland that night, nor did David. Both of them were too on edge from the traumatic experience with what appeared to be not just an imaginary friend. No. It was clear that something about the fact that both of them could see the Hatter had to mean something. Poor Alice couldn't help but dart her eyes about the small pink room over and over and over and over again and again and again and again and again. It just didn't add up to Alice as to why her father had lied about seeing the Hatter. He doesn't believe me. He doesn't even believe himself. Suddenly, Alice found herself slowly pulling off her sheets and comforter before slowly leaving her bed and slowly landing her bare feet softly on the cold wooden floorboards beneath her. More thoughts began to zoom through sweet Alice's mind. Maybe father was right, but then... Why did he look right at the Hatter? Why didn't he tell Mother? Can Father see them? The 
creatures from... Now, where do they come from? A, a nightmare? No? All things hail from a distant land, or at least a land of sorts. I wonder what land could be so strange. A land surely full of wonders, albeit dark ones. Wonderland. Alice screamed in her own mind. Wonderland! And as if by magic, Alice watched as her closet doors spun open wide and a thick red fog burst forth. Through the door, Alice could see nothing, yet she found herself compelled to walk slowly towards this strange mist. It was bizarre, really. Why on earth would she go in the direction of a mysterious fog that had just appeared from nowhere? Why would she even think of going into something of the sort? It was strange. Weird. No, no, not weird. Absolutely mad. It was an absolutely mad idea to follow, but an idea that she herself had not thought of. No, it was as if she didn't control her own head. She couldn't resist walking towards the fog, but rather lightly hovered into it. Before more questions about what she was doing could enter her mind, Alice found herself inside the closet, only snapping out of her trance-like state when she heard the sound of the doors swinging shut in unison behind her. Somehow she had ended up in the closet, but looking around her, she quickly realized that this was not her closet. In fact, Alice could not so much as see her hand in front of her face. The strange fog had all but vanished, leaving only Alice and in the sea of darkness, and a silence so piercing that it unsettled the small girl. No sooner could Alice think of where she was than did two eyes appear from out of the darkness. They were bright yellow and illuminated the very space around her. The eyes did not move, only stared deep into Alice's, as if they sought to break into her very soul. Alice stood there, staring back in confusion rather than fear. By all means, the girl should have been terrified, but she just stood there, eyes fixed on the pair of glowing eyes before her. Alice, after several minutes of this, finally broke the silence. Who are you? Where am I? She asked, a slight hint of curiosity dancing on her words. As the figure hovered there, a row of gleaming razors appeared from under the glowing eyes. A long, menacing chuckle erupted filling Alice finally with the terror that she had until now all but forgotten. <laughs> dear, dear, sweet Alice, how long we have waited. I am the Cheshire Cat. You have, of course, already met the Hatter, I presume, asked the creature. Uh, I, don't I don't like, like him. him. He wants he to hurt me. me. You all do. Go, Go away. away! Go away! Whined Alice as she put her small hands over her eyes, but for what reason, she knew not. My, my. You have it all wrong, sweet child. Chirped a voice that Alice recognized. From the void of black emerged the Hatter, only he didn't look menacing. His hat was bright now, with vibrant colors flashing all around his head. His eyes were no longer red, but an inviting shade of baby blue. Laced upon his hands were white silk gloves, which looked to be that of an English gentleman's attire. In his right hand he held a small teacup with a floral pattern painted on the edges. In his left hand he held a small bottle. The hatter drank some, then the cat, and finally the same bottle rolled to rest at Alice's feet. She tentatively picked it up, reading a tag that caught her eye on the small drink which simply read, Drink me. Alice looked over the contents of the bottle, a liquid which emitted a neon rainbow, swirled furiously within the container. Alice looked to the Hatter, who simply replied, Drink, and you will understand. 
Alice hesitantly popped the lid off the bottle and slowly brought it to her nose. The liquid smelled fantastic, as if all of Alice's favorite scents had been combined into a concoction of sweet, savory bliss. Alice drank a small swig of the drink, tasting like a blend of strawberries and lemon tea. As strange as the taste was to Alice, she found that she rather enjoyed it, and before she knew it, the bottle sat empty in her hand. Alice looked to the Hatter, who simply smiled warmly at her. Alice noticed that a door now sat behind the two. The door was magnificent, adorned with various colors and patterns, almost like it was something straight out of a fantasy book. The Hatter took the key from his left hand and unlocked the large door. Immediately, a flood of light shot through the sea of darkness. Alice was awestruck. Just moments before, these people had seemed so menacing, but now they seemed so inviting and sincere. The Hatter beckoned for Alice to step through the door, bowing at the waist and removing his hat before saying, Ladies first, my dear. Where does it lead? The still hesitant girl asked. The Hatter. Sensing her reluctance, put his long arm across Alice's shoulder and excitedly announced, To a place where dreams become reality, where all your travels simply melt away. To a land of wonder, Alice. A wonderland. Your wonderland, Alice. It's mine. A wonderland all for mine, she said with wonderment apparent on her small face. All for you, my dear. Every flower, every cloud, everything you can imagine is yours to enjoy, he replied while flashing her another happy smile. Alice looked at the Hatter, then to the Cheshire Cat, who now had eyes which were a beautiful shade of purple, and rather than the menacing grin of needles that he had worn before, his smile too had become softer, almost as if Alice had met the exact opposites of the people that she had met before. Alice then turned to the door, pondering just what Wonderland had in store for her. In the end, as was custom with Alice, curiosity won out over reasoning, as she stepped through the doorway and into the blinding light of Wonderland. <laughs>